Ime Udoka reportedly had zero interest in coaching James Harden. Ime said, quote, it's not going to work here. Here's why this is exciting on many levels. First off, they are letting Ime Udoka do what he feels is right. And to go back to the Rafael Stone reports of meddling with Stephen Silas, as you get further and further away from the Stephen Silas era, you do get why he was perhaps a little bit meddlesome. It's not to justify. I do think it's weird that Stone was able to become the general manager after Daryl Morey when the guy was essentially a team lawyer. And you take a look at some of these contracts and you do wonder, wait, there was a market for Dylan Brooks. Somebody else was offering something close to four years and $80 million. But it feels like there is some autonomy in the Rockets organization separate from Tillman Fertitta, Patrick Fertitta, who are obsessed with James Harden. And that is a huge, huge thing to have in an organization. An idea of some separation of business and sports. I'm very happy to see this. And I, I think Steve B, who probably talked to somebody that works for the Celtics, who still talks to Ime Udoka, hearing that Ime Udoka did not want Harden, it's the right move. And the people that are out there that wanted Harden back, like, I, I just do not understand you. I, I, I never will. I, I just don't see how you look at Ime Udoka, who the Rockets are bringing in because he is going to toughen this bunch up and think, oh yeah, let's also bring James Harden, who is literally the yang to the yin of that. Yeah, it, it shows like consistency in the image that they want in this team. Like right or wrong, or no, just not right or wrong, but depending on how you feel about the specifics of especially Dylan Brooks' contract, it, at least that they're going into this with the mindset of like we are getting these guys tougher. We are be getting becoming a more physical and tough team, and that is the kind of ethos that we're running with. And it's not we're doing that, but also here's James Harden. Like right. you know, like they're not doing that. So that that makes me that again. It's a little bit. And I, I said this uh, after the deals went down this weekend that like. We're still in the like Ime Udoka like kind of honeymoon phase, the same way that D'Amico Ryan's is in with yes. the Texans, where it's like we everyone still believes in their vision because the games, you know, they haven't tipped, they haven't kicked off yet. That we trust them; it's a breath of fresh air. They're the best coaches in this city. Uh, that, that either the t or they're the best coaches that either these teams have had in at least three years, right? And so that 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 is a step in the right direction of okay we we trust we trust the process so to speak we trust the process not literally trust the process trust you know. this process trust not this. that process the the, <laughs> the new process lowercase t trust lowercase <laughs> p the process <laughs> I, i'm really happy he's here I, and i i've said it once i'll say it again like this is the biggest thing the rockets have done since they traded for chris paul and, you know, we'll see what happens with the draft picks. But it, it really is a matter of changing the actual culture here. And seeing that report today that Udoka put his fist down. I don't know what the conversation was with Stone. I, I imagine Stone didn't want Harden either. It, it just doesn't seem to make any sense with the direction of where they're going. Like, why do you bring Harden back? There's not. This is what's been driving me crazy, too. There's not this massive love for James Harden in Houston. There is some love for James Harden in Houston. That is different from everybody banging on the drums for him to return. It's more like, well, it would be nice to have him as opposed to what we had last year versus the conquering hero returns after asking his way out of Houston and asking his way out of Brooklyn and asking his way out of Philadelphia. Like, no, it's, 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 not, it's not Benedict Arnold going from the United States to the British. Who, who would be next? The French? <laughs> You know, this isn't that. Dutch. Right. Like, the, Benedict Arnold returning home. This is this is not that. It, it would have been, you're just bringing back a guy who played here for a long time. That was damn good. Yeah, it, it's it's the nostalgia, like, that. they're just trafficking, trafficking in, like, just pure nostalgia. And that is something that the Texans are also doing. But they're not, like, signing, 
you know, Mario Williams to be to be the defensive end. That's they're the not perfect sign, comparison. They're not signing J.J. Watt. They're not signing Andre Johnson. Like, that's what <laughs> bring in James – a less extreme version, but that is basically what James Harden is. It would be the, hey, remember four years ago, the good times? Williams is a perfect comparison because I know some people look at Harden as, like, one of these just elite players ever. And statistically, you'd have a point. But I look at him like a Mario Williams. I'm like, he was really, really good, but he never really seemed like he cared that much. And I think that's a pretty critical thing to have for an athlete that you want to be the centerpiece of your organization against. 